described and captioned media program. In the classroom and online, dcmp.org. taking my book after I told you not to. I didn't take it. I was just reading it. Big cat, big cat. This is our house, and you'll do as we say. And Betty, that will teach you to take my things. When the Twinkle Twins awoke Christmas morning, their eyes opened as wide as teacups. For what do you suppose was sitting beside their bed? Two beautiful dolls, the perfect image of the gold and silver fairies. Why are children in books always loved and petted? Because they're good. That isn't so. My cousins get everything they want when they're not good. They're bad. They're mean and I hate them. Think you hate us so much? You'll probably be very happy to know that I've arranged for you to go to the orphanage on Monday. Yes, I am happy. You might show some gratitude for what we've done for you, you wicked child. Yes, I am wicked. I have no gratitude. I hate it here. I want to go to the orphanage. Now, go away. Go away. Get out. Goodbye. I'm Jane Eyre from D.C. 
Oh, we're expecting you. Come in. or you'll get your ears clipped. In view of the bad traits described in her aunt's letter, we must teach her to control her wicked, rebellious nature. You understand, Miss Devon? Yes, Mr. Brocklehurst. I insist upon strict obedience. You'll be severely punished if you try any of your deceitful tricks here. I'm not deceitful. Silence. There, Miss Temple, is an uncontrollable tongue. You see, her aunt was right. Do you know what happens to the wicked when they die? Oh, yes, sir. They go to... and burn. Do you know how to avoid that? Oh, yes, sir. Keep away from lightning and take very good care of your health. Mm. Her aunt warned me of a vicious temper. Keep a firm hand. Take her to her class. the earth revolves around the sun, another year has passed. Is that quite clear? Yes, yes Miss Eyre. Now then, Mary Lake, how long does it take the earth to go around the sun? I, I didn't hear the question. Step out here. Why didn't you hear the question? What were you doing? Well, I, uh... This is an outrage. Miss L, how dare you allow such things to go on in your class? You come with me, Ella. I am capable of controlling my pupils, Mr. Brockhurst. I shall punish Mary myself. Report at my study at once, Miss L. Go to your seat, Mary. I'll talk to you later. What do you mean by interfering with my discipline? These children need a little affection and understanding. They get too much discipline. I'll decide what's needed here. You defied me once too often. You're dismissed. Get out. I'll get out. Gladly. I've had enough of your charity. I've scrubbed and stitched and slaved for everything I ever got from you. I wish I could take every one of these poor, starved orphans away from you. You cruel, stingy child beater. And something to be done about the way they're treated. Get out. Get out. You ought to be tarred and feathered, you ugly old crocodile. What happened? I finally found courage to tell him what I thought. I called him an ugly old crocodile. Brocklehurst. He dismissed me. Just think. I'm leaving this place at last. I'm going to miss you. But what are you going to do? Don't worry, dear. With the small inheritance my uncle left me, I shall manage until I find something. Ever drop? I'll never drop myself. So you're the new governess of Thornfield Hall, huh? Well, young woman, take my advice. Mind your P's and Q's and stick to your governess. Mind yours and stick to your driving. I'm already late waiting for you to come out of the tavern. <laughs> All right, little one. This is the name, please. Oh, Richard. 
Richmond deal there lives a less as Bryce's Mayday morn. Who's... Do hurry. Stand. I'll show you some speed, my lady. My limited pull, that's me. Applaud, Daisy! And the little peoples of the woods. Oh, Daisy! What do you mean by frightening my horse? Your horse frightened me. My ankle. Thank you. May I ask where you're going? Thornfield Hall. Indeed. And what are you going to do there? It's any of your business. I'm the new governess. Whatever possessed you to walk all that distance when you had the carriage? The meadows were so beautiful, I preferred to walk. Your essence? French, German, drawing, music. You're quite accomplished, aren't you? I'm sure Mr. Rochester will approve. And who, may I ask, is Mr. Rochester? The child's uncle and guardian. Oh, I thought she was your child. No, I'm Fairfax, the housekeeper. I've been with the family for many years. I'll bring Adele in. If you please, miss, I'd like to beg your pardon for this afternoon and to thank you, miss, for not a telling of it. Don't mention it. What's your name? Samuel Poole. Your humble sir. That's all, Samuel. Yes. And seeing you've been so nice, miss, may I suggest that you keep your door locked at night? Adele, this is Miss Eyre, your new governess. How do you do, Miss Eyre? How do you do, Adele? What's your first name? Jane. Jane Eyre. I like that name. And I like you, too. You're young and pretty. And not old and cross-looking, like my other governess. She'll do. <laughs> I'm glad you approve of me. Perhaps you'd like to show Miss Eyre around while her room is being prepared. Lovely. Come, Miss Eyre. I'll show you the house. Very well. I'd love to. I do hope you like it here. I'm sure I shall. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely. In this room, Uncle Edward has the most beautiful party. Then I'm allowed to come down and meet all the guests. And 
I had so much fun. Do you like parties? Well, I've never been to one. Never been to a party? I'll ask Uncle Edward to invite you to the next one. You're very kind. Come in there. I'll show you upstairs. of the house. You know you should not come here. What a disagreeable woman. Who is she? That's Sam Poole's wife, Grace Poole. Oh, what does she do here? Oh, she sews and helps around the house. Adele, Miss Eyre. Your room is ready. I thought perhaps you'd like to freshen up after your journey. Thank you. Run along to the nursery, dear. I'll see you shortly, Adele. Very well. I'll show you your room. I think you'll find you have everything you need here. I'm sure I shall. Oh. Mr. Rochester wishes you to have tea with him in the drawing room. Thank you, Mrs. Fairfax. I'm Edward Rochester. Good evening, sir. You sit here, my dear. Thank you. Will you pour the tea? Certainly. I must apologize for my rudeness this afternoon. I didn't oh, know... Oh, don't that... apologize. I was the one who was rude. How many, please? Your tea, sir. Thank you. How's your anchor? Much better, thank you. Have you seen your pupil? Oh, yes, she's charming. She's spoiled. And I fear a very poor student. But she seems quite intelligent. I'm sure we get along very well. Is anything the matter? Well, this is all so strange. So overwhelming after the orphanage. Oh, you must forget about the orphanage. Thornfield's your home from now on. Mrs. Fairfax tells me that you're very accomplished. Do you sing? A little. Would you sing for me? If you wish. Please. Serenade. Schubert. Thank you. 
Lovely. Thank you. Is there anything else, sir? No, thank you. I hope to be very happy here, monsieur. Just one of the servants. Grace, stop the disturbance, please. Yes, Mrs. Fairfax. Get up there. <laughs> well, what do you mean by running away in the middle of your lesson? Come down at once. I can't, Miss Jane. My foot's crossed. Well, I don't know how I'm going to reach you. Climbing part of the botany lesson. Uncle Edward, help! My foot's caught. Her foot's caught. Her foot's caught. So I gather. Allow me. Oh, thank you. And now, you little monkey. Come along. That's right. And where would you like this bag is delivered, Miss Eyre? To the schoolroom, please. She must be punished. Can't I be punished tomorrow when Uncle Edward's gone to London? <laughs> no. Quite right. The spoiling must stop. I quite agree. Oh, please, Uncle Edward. You know, you're going up, young lady. You're getting heavy. Please, Uncle Edward, take me to London with you. Not this time, my sweet. London must be wonderful. Oh, I don't particularly care for London life, but I must see my solicitors. And I'm bringing back a party of guests. Is Lady Blanche coming too? Yes. 
Uncle Edward, when are you going to get married? Next month, probably. And are you going to marry Lady Blanche? Why? Because I'd like to... Uh, uh, I'd rather wish him... Oh, well, anyway, I'll be the flower girl. <laughs> da la 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 I wonder what's going to happen to all of us when Lady Blanche Ingram becomes mistress here. What shall I do now? But have you finished helping Sam already? Yes, he scrubbed pilot. What next? Well, uh, dust the bandage. All right. Again? Anything to keep her out of mischief? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm afraid we're not getting many lessons done these days. My bunny lies over the ocean. Who oh, bring back my bunny to me? Oh, bring back, oh, bring back. Oh, bring back my bunny to me. Short work of my porcelain, Miss Eyre. Well, I couldn't let the child suffocate to save your precious porcelain. <laughs> and I don't see anything to laugh at. So that's the new governess. Impertinent and uh, pretty. And very intelligent. Aha. Uh -huh. I'd rather not. But you can't refuse. You would offend him. Oh, he won't miss me. But he asked for you. I suppose I'll have to then. A little gaiety he won't hurt you. Hurry up and dress, dear. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, dear. She's very solid, isn't it? Oh, thank you. Come, dear. Should we go get some sweets? Oh, thank you. You take my arm. Thank you. I assure you, Edward, you have no cause to worry. I'm confident the decision will be in your favor. Yes, but when? How long? My advice. Proceed with your plan. When the decision is handed down, I will personally deliver the document. Leave all these tiresome legal details to me. You have much more pleasant matters to attend to. Yes, you know. A business conference and a house full of guests. Edward, aren't you ashamed? And you, Charles. Can't you forget you're a barrister for just one evening? Back to your guests, sir. What are we coming to when a lady must say to a gentleman, this is my dance, I believe? <laughs> <laughs> Enter the beautiful governors. Excuse me a moment. Allow me. Good evening, sir. You're late? Yes. Your invitation came a bit late. Oh, I'm sorry. But sometimes I get absent-minded. May I have the pleasure? If you wish.
You dance very well, Miss Hare. Thank you. May I ask you a question? Certainly. Why did you insist upon my coming down to your apartment? Oh, I thought it might amuse you. Are you sure it wasn't to amuse yourself at my expense? You haven't a very good opinion of me. Oh, but I have. Then why did you wear your schoolroom clothes? Why didn't you dress up? Because I didn't intend to appear as anything but what I am. The governess. You're a funny little thing, aren't you? But very charming. Are you laughing at me again? No. Dear Edward, always a charming host. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Miss Eyre. Lady Blanche Ingram and Mr. Craig. How do you do? Come along, darling. I have something to tell you. You excuse me. Shall we down? Uh, no, no, thank you. I must find Adele. Time for her to go to bed. Much too late for her, really. Good night. Now tell me, what does Sir Roland resemble? A frog. A frog. <laughs> <laughs> and now tell me, what does Mrs. Wilkie look like? A giraffe. <laughs> a giraffe. <laughs> Mrs. Wilkie looks like a giraffe. <laughs> Dale, time for you to go to bed. Oh, no, madam, please. <laughs> I haven't had so much fun since I retired from Parliament. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lord but it's bedtime for Dale. Oh, good night, dear. Good night. Uh, what moves do you have before you go? Tell me, what does Lord Ingram look like? Huh? A walrus. <laughs> Dear, you're a naughty girl. <laughs> Surely you aren't retiring so early. Edward, darling, why don't you urge Miss Eyre to return after she's put her charge to bed? She seems to be enjoying the party so thoroughly. But Uncle Edward, may we stay to the end at your wedding party? Sometimes I get absent-minded. May I have the pet? You're a funny little thing, aren't you? But very charming. Mr. Rochester! 
Thank you. Why didn't you call for help? I didn't think it necessary to frighten your guests. Here, drink this. Thank you. I don't know how to thank you. It was nothing. Oh, your poor hands. Why, they're burnt. Good night, sir. I'm leaving for London with my guest the first thing in the morning. May I say goodbye now? Goodbye. Mr. Rochester wasn't expected back for another week, but she wasn't convinced. There'll be great doings here when the master does get back. What with a wedding on the way, and her, I mean, Lady Blanche Ingram, so particular, being city bred. I don't think I shall be here long. Oh, you won't let her drive you away, Miss Jane. It's been so pleasant having you here with us. I told you I heard the carriage, and it did not deliver. And just look what he brought me. Oh, good gracious, and his room isn't ready. I'm so prepared. Isn't he lovely? I'm going to call him Friday, because he's black. And that's the day Uncle Edward came home. Come in. Good evening. Good evening, sir. You've been well? Quite, thank you. And the injured hands? All healed. Uncle oh, Edward, did you bring Mr. Arrow a present too? Why, darling. Well, of course. I really are. Oh, it's only a book. Sonnets of Shakespeare. It's lovely, don't you? Miss Eyre, may I ask a favor? I'm always glad to be of assistance, sir. The decorators are coming tomorrow to start refurnishing the West Wing. I want you to help select these. You know, seventy. Then you are planning to marry soon? In about a month. But are you sure I'll be able to do things to suit the lady's case? Quite sure. Very well. I'll do my best. Thank you. Adele, you must come to bed now. Do you get Friday sleep with me? Oh, I hardly think so. Not yet. I'll put him in the kitchen. Uncle Edward, stay a while. I want to talk to you. I won't stay long. I'll take the puppy. Good night. And thank you again for the book. Well, young lady, and what's the great problem? Uncle Edward, are you really going to get married? Certainly. Wouldn't you like to have a pretty aunt living here with us? If I could choose my own aunt. And whom would you choose? I think that Miss Eyre would make a lovely aunt. Really? But I don't think she'd have us. Perhaps she would. Why don't you ask her? Hmm. You ought to have been asleep an hour ago. I know. You ask her and I'll make her say yes. Do you think you could? Mm-hmm. That'd be very nice. I'm always glad to be of assistance, sir. <laughs> Good night. And thank you again for Friday. Good night. Well? Don't forget to ask her. Oh, come in. I was expecting you. Miss Eyre, may I present Mr. Halliburton? How do you do? How do you do? This was used by the Duchess of Laidlaw for her private dresses. 
Very suitable colour, don't you think? A bit florid, in my opinion. Florid? Mm -hmm. But of course, you know the lady's taste. Then I would suggest this, with findings of uh, rose moire. I rather like this one. We prefer this. A very suitable choice. I congratulate the lady on her discriminating taste. The room would look delightful. I'm sure Mrs. Rochester will be charmed by it. About a piano, have you any suggestions? I prefer a simple one. It can be decorated later to suit the lady. An excellent idea. And now will you come to the library? The jeweler is waiting. Do you really need me? Please. Very well. It is impossible to appreciate their real value unless one first tries them off. Now, if, if Madame would permit... Well, of course. You don't mind, do you? Yes. Aren't they uh, beautiful? Beautiful? Perhaps madam would like to see the effect. No, thank you. Oh, come now. You must have some feminine vanity. They are beautiful. Seems foolish to admire oneself in ornaments. They must be taken off the next moment. Please make your selections. I'd like to go. Oh, but I want you to make the selections. I like these. But I'm sure Lady Blanche would prefer diamonds. Uh, uh, diamonds? Uh, we'll take these. May I go now? I've neglected Adele these past two weeks. Oh, but we haven't finished. I'm sorry, but I have a headache. You must excuse me. anything wrong. Are you ill? No. But I need a rest. Now that you've finished with me, may I go away for a few days' holiday? If you wish. Thank you. You'll be a good little girl now. Enjoy your holiday, dear, and come back well and strong. Thank you. Will you say goodbye to Mr. Rochester for me? Of course I will. Now do right. I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Are you going? Yes. What, without saying goodbye to me? Well, I asked Mrs. Fairfax to say goodbye for me. I, I didn't want to disturb you. I should have been more disturbed if you'd gone without my seeing you. There's something I must tell you. Will you come with me for a moment? Of course. See that I've been falling in love with you all this time. But Lady Blanche. Oh, that ended in London. And I realized then that what I wanted most I'd left behind me. You, Jane. And all this time you let me think it was for her? Well, I thought if you liked the house well enough, you might be willing to take me along with it as a part of a necessary evil. 
It was mean of you to trick me like that. You mustn't anymore. You must never deceive me again. I'll make up for it. Oh, I'm going to spoil you, pamper you, cover you with jewels. Oh, no, you're not. If I wish. You learn to care for me as I am. And if I change, I'm afraid you'll stop. Deep wind. Well, what was that, Edward? I've heard it a number of times. It frightened me. Nothing. Nothing to be alarmed about. But that mysterious side of the house, the fire in your room and that wild laughter. Is there anything wrong here? Jane, do you love me? I do. And do you trust me? That's part of loving someone, isn't it? Then believe me, you have nothing to worry about. Oh, Uncle Edward, you've asked her. I have. Oh, how wonderful. More tea? No, thank you. And when does the ceremony take place? As soon as my solicitor, Craig, arrives from London with an important legal document. Sam! Sam! We take this alcove of power of flower. Will there be many guests? Very few. Only the immediate household and my solicitor, an old friend. Any relatives of the bride? None. Anything wrong? Your pardon, sir. A new, sir. We can decorate this arch with smilax. It will be most effective. And the bride can come through. Edward, my husband. I've come such a long way. I've been searching for you everywhere. Uh, well, I say, I... Oh, we're going to be married again. Are you one of the wedding guests? Better go to your room, Bertha. Edward, who is she? What does she mean? Bertha! mean, sir. Yes. She's been insane for years. The marriage is being annulled. That's the legal document I was expecting my solicitor to bring. Oh, really? Then you won't need me until it arrives. I wish you good day, sir. Edward, why didn't you tell me? Because I loved you. I wanted to spare you. Forgive me. I hoped it wouldn't be necessary for you to know. But I was afraid of losing the only happiness that has come into my life after all these miserable years. I've done what I could for her. But the specialists have pronounced her mania incurable, hereditary. I kept her here in the care of Mrs. Poole rather than send her to an institution. Don't you see? It was the only way. Jane. Please try and forgive me. Please. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid you'll have to come. She's so violent, we can't manage her. Wait here for me, please. J. 
Jane. Come in. A special courier has just arrived in London, sir, with this document. It's from Mr. Gray. He says it's very important. But Jane, she's gone. She can't have gone very far, sir. You're right. I've searched everywhere for him. We watch out looking for him now. Oh, come in, Walter. Where's she there? She's gone, dear. Is everyone out? Everyone except the poor creatures. She's fired the house and she's in it. We couldn't find her. There she is. Don't go in, sir. You have no chance. Uncle Edward, please come back. Gentleman wishes to see you. Very well. Come in. Miss Eyre, have you definitely decided to go to India with us? Yes, I have. You realize it will be hardly a pleasure trip. Are you trying to discourage me, Mr. Rivers? On the contrary. I want you to come with me. 
Not as my assistant, sir, but uh, as my wife. Your wife? Yes. It sounds somewhat abrupt, I know, since I've never given you any reason to surmise that I felt that way about you. In that strange country, a white woman needs the protection of a husband. It will be a good work for humanity. I'm sure you will give me great assistance and happy companionship. Thank you, Mr. Rivers. I shall think it over and let you know. How can you stand there and calmly ladle out beans just when you're going to be married within an hour? Some girls don't appreciate their luck. He's so wonderful. If I were in your shoes, I'd be walking on air. But if I catch the plague, I'll make the dying wish that he marry you. Oh, I say, will you? I'll go get your things ready for you. Here? Things has changed. Thornfield's gone. Gone? Mm -hmm. Aye. Early was a fair night and a fine morning. And me and the missus was locking up the place. You were sister to the missus, I... Oh, say. never mind all that, Sam. Oh, sister the missus, I says. It's dangerous business keeping that lunatic here. Oh, please, Sam. Oh, well. She burned the house down the night she left me. Down to the ground. She did that? Aye, oh, the poor thing. And burned to death in it, too. Oh, how horrible. But Edward, Mr. Rochester, is he safe? But he would try to save her. Oh, was he hurt? The flames was roaring, and the master disappearing. <laughs> but how is he? Where is he? He's living in the caretaker's cottage. Because I was trying to tell you, Thornfield. How many times have I got a call? Where's my tea? What's wrong with this place? Well, why don't you answer? I brought your tea, Edward. Say that again. I brought your tea, Edward. Come closer. Is it really you, Jane? I heard only yesterday what had happened. I got here as quickly as I could. Kind of you to call me, sir. Do you have some tea? Have you been well? I hope you're well situated. I'll come back here to be with you, Edward. Pity me. No, I don't. Yes, pity, pity. Strange. You pity me when I'm blind. And yet, when I was worse than blind, you had no mercy. Oh, it isn't true. It is true, I tell you. We don't belong to each other. We never did. You went out of my life once. Please go now. It's 
there anything wrong, sir? Mrs. Fairfax? Yes, Mr. Rochester. Has she gone? No, I haven't gone. And I'm not going. You want me, you know you do. Nothing has changed. I belong here with you, my dear. I'll never leave you again. The described and captioned media program provides services designed to benefit students who are blind, visually impaired, deaf, hard of hearing, and deaf-blind. These services include a library of free loan described and captioned educational media, a clearinghouse of information related to educational media access, a gateway to internet resources related to accessibility, and a center for training and evaluation of any service provider desiring to appear on the DCMP's approved lists of description and captioning service providers. There are no user registration or service fees. Visit the DCMP at dcmp.org. The DCMP is funded by the U.S. Department of Education and administered by the National Association of the Deaf.